Welcome back to Inkle's Cartoon Review. Disney has a long-standing tradition of reimagining old stories. Not just fairy tales, but also history and classical books. Now, these are stories that most of us have heard about, but not all of them. Some examples include the Rescuer stories, based on Marjorie Sharp's Rescuer series, Dottie Smith's book, 101 Dalmatians, and the story we'll be looking at today, Lloyd Alexander's The Black Cauldron. And what most people don't realize is this movie is actually a combination of the first two books in the Chronicles of Perdane series, The Book of Three and The Black Cauldron. Now, I haven't read the book series myself, but I understand the movie doesn't quite do it justice. Lloyd Alexander himself said the movie has no resemblance to the original books, but he did say the movie itself was enjoyable. So what makes an animated movie good? I think it breaks down to four key elements. The characters, the story, the art, and the music. If any one of these is bad enough, it can ruin the rest of the film for you. So let's break the Black Cauldron down into these elements here and see if it's worth questing for. Onward! Being a mashup of the first two books, this story does need some exposition. Thankfully, the movie provides it for us. Legend has it, in the mystic land of Bredain, there was once a king so cruel and so evil that even the gods feared him. Since no prison could hold him, he was thrown alive into a crucible of molten iron. There, his demonic spirit was captured in the form of a great black cauldron. For uncounted centuries, the black cauldron lay hidden, waiting, while evil men searched for it, knowing whoever possessed it would have the power to resurrect an army of deathless warriors with them, rule the world. Of course! Sorry, I had to. But first, let me go into some details. Most of this plot revolves around the Horned King and his plan to find the Black Cauldron to use to raise an undead army. This is admittedly pretty dark by Disney standards. The Horned King is trying to track down Henwin, a pig that has visions of the future. Taren, an assistant pig keeper to the enchanter Dalvin, is forced to flee with Henwin to escape the Horned King's army and he loses her pretty much immediately. Gurgi shows up for no other reason than... Aww, he's so cute! Well, that and to provide one of the major plot points later in the movie. Terran infiltrates the Horned King's lair and is captured almost immediately. He escapes with Princess Eloway and the Bard Fluter. Terran finds a convenient magic sword and they escape. The party decides to find the cauldron first and destroy it so the Horned King won't be able to use its power. Gurgi shows up to provide the next plot point. Fairies! Fairy Godparents! So let's take a look at our fantasy story checklist. We have one unlikely hero, one princess, one wise old man, one cute sidekick, mystical creatures, and a magic sword. Now all we need is an evil witch, an epic last battle, and the final kiss. The fairies send our heroes to the Everfree Forest to find the cauldron, where they find three ancient witches, triple check, who bargain for the cauldron. But being a demonic cauldron, the four learn that they can't destroy it at all. They're captured again, and the Horned King uses the cauldron to raise his undead army. Gurgi sacrifices himself in the cauldron to break the spell. The Horn King, wait, what? So, Gurgi, who had up to this point been nothing but an annoying, rhyming thief, gives up his life to save people that don't even respect him? <laughs> this, is, this is a kid's movie, right? Thus foiled, the Horn King lashes out at Terran, who stayed behind to help the others escape. He sucked into the cauldron, where we're subject to one of the most gruesome Disney deaths ever. With Skeletor defeated, the heroes head home to a bittersweet victory. But the witches show up to retrieve the cauldron. Fluter, in a rare show of testicular fortitude, demands the witch bargain for the cauldron's return. 
So what does Terran ask? Why, Gurgi, of course. Gurgi will live. Check. And so our intrepid heroes head back to Dalbin and Penwin. Happy ending. This is a decent story, but without watching the movie, you could probably guess the plot. But story isn't everything. Our main characters aren't your standard fantasy hero fare. Terran is an assistant pig keeper, Princess Elloway is an unskilled enchantress, fluter, an effeminate bumbling bard with a truthful harp, a sheepdog monkey... thing, a cranky pixie, and a pretty porcine prophet. The cast sounds like something out of a Space Quest game. Now there are some big name voice actors in this, as Disney is prone to do but I found the characters themselves two-dimensional and flat. The same personalities would work just as well in a science fiction story. But if I had to pick a favorite, I'd have to go with Gurgi. Oh, poor miserable Gurgi deserves fierce smackings and whackings on his poor tender head. I was left with no munchings and crunching. Aww, here you go, little guy. The villain is impressive, too. It's rare to find someone this intimidating in a movie for children. The music really does help with this story. It adds a lot of ambiance here and goes well with the overall theme for this. There is appropriately no musical numbers. Well, not unless you count this. Okay, I will admit that this movie is beautiful. There's an almost obsessive level of detail to it. The meadows are bright and cheery, the dungeons dark and dreary. This is one of Disney's strengths. They know how to create whole new worlds. Whole new world. But is it worth buying? Well, I like this movie. It's kind of a tired old plot, but it's a good one. And it is a Disney movie here, so if you're a fan of Disney, or animation in general, it's a good addition to your collection. But then again, I'm Inkwell, and I like cartoons. <laughs>